finances are in the pits, my kids are all sick, and to top it all off, my wife is thinking about leaving me. Ah! What on earth is God doing in my life? What on earth is God doing in my life? We brought that just to you. We brought you back to the vineyard because that's where you're going to find your answer to the question that you probably never thought you could possibly ever know. What on earth is God doing, not in everybody else's life, but really my life? Welcome to an extremely life-changing course. Your wife or your husband or your best friend wrote me your life and gave it to me and said, please, this person needs lots of help. Please, please teach to them. You're going to feel that way. You're going to say, who told you about that, that I was thinking that way? How, how, how do I know that? Because we're all the same. We all have challenges. We all have things that don't make sense. And we wonder, where on earth is God? And if God is good, why doesn't he fix this? How many of you have wondered those questions in the darkness of the night and when things, when the sun is not shining and everything is falling apart and you really wonder, what on earth is God, where are you? And if you're good, how come I don't feel that in my life? Come on now, you ever been there or am I by myself? How many felt that way? Yeah. Well, I want you to take a look in your workbook. And we're going to explore this set together. And we're going to eventually get over to these grapes. These are, uh, these are good grapes. They look like they're plastic from here. Guaranteed, this is not plastic. (laughs) And thankfully, there's no pits in it. If you're good, maybe we'll give you all those grapes at the end. But the guy right here, he's getting the plastic ones. <laughs> so, what on earth is God doing in my life? And under the introduction, we have some verses. I, I want to just admit, it appears to me that for the Bible teaches, it's impossible to know what God's doing in my life. Doesn't make sense to me. Well, that's because of this verse. Session number one. For my thoughts, says God, (laughs) are not your thoughts. We're not on the same track. Nor are your ways my ways. Your ways are here, my ways are here. How different, God, are your thoughts and your ways from me? Well, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, how about going up, you know, 100,000 miles or kilometers? That's how far we are different. So my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So we might as well close out today. What on earth is God doing? I have no idea. (laughs) Because the Bible says his ways are different than my ways and his thoughts are different than my thoughts. And since they're so different, how on earth can I ever have the answer to that question? Now, look what Moses did with that problem. In Exodus chapter 33, God and Moses are having this conversation. And Moses is talking to God. Yet you, God have said to me, Moses, I know you by name. It's quite a sentence. A man saying to God, you said to me, I know you, I know you by name. And you have also found grace in my sight. You've said to me, not only do you know my name, but I found grace in your sight. You were pleased with what I did. How about that? Now, therefore, since you know my name and I've pleased you, I um, want to ask you to do something for me. And that's where this course came from. Therefore, I pray, I ask, if I have found grace in your sight and you just told me you did, then I want you to show me something. Oh, I want you to show me something. I want you to show me your way. Why? Why? Because your ways and my ways aren't the same. And unless you tell me, I'll never figure it out. I can't get up to heaven 
while I'm living to get the answer to the question. And since you're up there and I'm down here, if you don't tell me your ways, I can never figure it out. So Moses felt like I did, and you do. I want to know your way for one reason. What is that? That I, Moses, may know you. Because if I don't know your ways and your habits and how you feel and how you think and what your personality is, then how can I know you? You'll be God way up there that I can't know. Because unless you reveal yourself to me, I can't know you. And that I may know you and... Since I get to know you, I may find more grace in your sight. Because now that I know what you're doing and what your ways are, I can kind of um, align myself with your ways. Instead of doing my way, which I found out isn't a smart way to do it and doesn't bring you pleasure. Now that you reveal your ways to me, I can move from here to here and do it your way. Whoa. Does that make sense to you? So is it possible for you today, if you really want, and I I would take for granted this question was a little bit interesting to you or you wouldn't have come today. Well, then maybe the right thing to do is to say to God, remember me, (laughs) I'm Bruce. My mom and dad named that. And um, some of the time I found pleasure in your sight. Some of the time, not so much. I would ask you today that you would show me what on earth are you doing in my life? (laughs) Because I want to know. So that I'm not fighting against you, but instead I finally understand you and I could live with you and bring pleasure to you. How many of you could actually hear yourself saying that? Can you? Why don't you? You mean just out loud? Yeah. I found in Africa, you guys are much more free than people in America. If you ever asked a group of people in America at the same time to pray out loud, people won't know what to do. The preacher is the only one who prays out loud. But in Africa, I've been in many services where the pastor says, let's all pray. Everybody starts praying. So why don't you pray for a minute and say to God, God, my name is. And some of the time in my life, I've brought you pleasure. Uh, And you know about the rest of it. Let's not talk about that. (laughs) Would you please reveal some of your ways to me today? Because I want to bring more pleasure to you. Can you do that? All right, on your feet. Let's hear you all pray at the same time in your heart language. Go. Out loud. <laughs> Heaven loves to hear your prayers this morning. God enjoys hearing all his children saying, please show me more about you. Tell me more about you. How God loves that to happen. And so we pray this in all the languages that are happening all over the world right now. Show up today for us. Show us what on earth are you doing Lord, so when we walk out of this place at the end of the day, we'll absolutely know the answer and never be confused again. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you. Let's have a seat. Now, since his ways are not our ways and our thoughts, I really can't understand God then, can I? I can't. Because he says, my ways are not your ways. They're not. And my ways are above yours as the heavens and the earth. And that's awfully discouraging until I understand that there's more to the story. Is it really possible to understand God? Most people say it's not. And then God says, what are you talking about? Jeremiah chapter 9. Is it possible to know what God is doing in your life? Thus says the Lord. So this is something God's going to say. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might, nor let the rich man glory in his riches, but 
let him who glories, glory in this, colon, that he, oh, that he what? Understands and knows me. What's God saying? You're supposed to understand me. Yes, you are. You're supposed to understand me and you're supposed to know me. And if you don't understand me, it's because you've not hunted after me and you've not researched in the scripture and you've not asked me to show you my ways. Well, God, you mean a mere human can understand you? Yes. And I want you to. Or what kind of relationship can we have if you don't understand me? So never again say to yourself, it's impossible to understand God. It is not. And the more you know his ways, the more you'll understand him. And you're going to find out today so many of his ways, your heart is going to burst open. Because when you know his ways, guess what you do? You know him. That I am the Lord. Okay, what are you like? Well, thank you for asking. I am a God who exercises loving kindness. That's the first thing you're going to tell me about you. Not that you're the big powerful God. Well, I am. But if you really want to get to know me, this is what I am like. I exercise. I do things because of my loving kindness. That's... That's at the center of who I am. I'm filled with loving kindness. Oh, are you mean? What? Are you selfish? What? Are you distant? I will never leave you nor forsake you. I told you that. Really? Are you filled with loving kindness? Yes. Oh, I'm filled with loving kindness and judgment. I am fair and I make things right. If somebody does wrong to you and you let me take care of it, I'll make it right. And I only do what's right in the earth. For in these things, says God, I delight. I delight to show loving kindness to you. Which means what? If this represents God and it's me and he exercises loving kindness to me, I really like that. But guess who likes it more than me? He does. What does he say? I delight in showing people my loving kindness. Why? Because the more you know that I'm filled with loving kindness, and by the way, I never stop being filled with loving kindness because that's who I am. I am love. Not that I love and do that. I am it. I am love, and I never stop being love. Woo. So are you grabbing this? All right, now, since he is God, and since he made us, the question that I have next is, okay, it would be terrific if you would tell me what you're doing in my life and what you want me to do. Isn't that a fair question? Well, think of it this way. God in the Bible reveals that he has a divine plan and that he's all-powerful, that he has no limitations of anything, and that anything that he thinks of, he's powerful enough to do. And he is a master in planning. Before he made the world, he planned it all out. (laughs) Yeah. I knew the beginning, and I knew the end, and because God doesn't live in time, There is no past, present, and future to God. It's just now. That it wasn't hard for him to be before time and during time and after time. Because it's all, it's all his secret. In a sense, think about this vineyard up here. And if really, if I'm close to it, I can, uh, can only see this. But the more I back away, I see more and more. And if I keep backing away, and I go into this big, beautiful vineyard on the hill, I can see the whole thing at one time. Aha, that's God. From before the creation of the world till the end, when it's all done, I am, I am. Not I will be, I am. Hmm. So when he made this plan, now this is where it gets into you and me. 
he needed in this story that he's going to do, let's say this trellis that's holding up these branches is that story of his. And from here to here in his story, he needed something done on the earth in a particular country, in a particular village, at a particular time in history. And he, he says, I need this person to have this personality to do this thing. Because I need these 73 good works done between here and here for me to reach over here. And when he thinks of those works that he decided before you and I were around, guess what he then turns around and does? <laughs> I'm now going to make the perfect person to live in this place at this time with these characteristics so they can do the good works that I prepared for them to do before I made them. <laughs> before I made them. Nobody else. He didn't make two of you. He only made one of you. And only you go from here to here. And what happens if you say, <laughs> oh dear, but all of us sometimes do this. We say, uh-huh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I want to come over here and play. Well, get what's God want? He's not against play, but if it's time for one of those good works, what's he trying to do? Psst. Hey, Wilkinson, you're off track, son. Why don't you come on back over here? No, I don't want to. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm, I'm getting a little bit perturbed with you. Uh, go, why don't you go run the rest of the world but me? Why don't you let me alone? Nah, I can't. Why not? Because <laughs> I made you to do that. And if you don't do it, it doesn't get done. And besides that, you're starting to play in the mud. Yeah. You, you shouldn't be playing in the mud anymore. <laughs> you should get out of that. You know, I have a word for that mud. What is that? It's, uh, it's a sin. And, you know, because I'm your dad, if you don't get out of that sin, son, are you, you're going to make me do something I don't want to do. What's that? Uh, help you get out of the mud. <laughs> so now you know why you're here. Why are you here? Because he wanted some things done. Right here. And he put you here. And he put no one else here. And everything he made in you is just for that. Oh, now you know what God's wanting to do with you. What he planned before he made you. And therefore, when a person comes and says, I have no purpose, you don't understand. The purpose of God is why he made you. You don't have to invent your purpose. You have to just ask him, would you show me what you want me to do? That's one thing God loves to do. So let's go back to this passage. Part number two. What is God seeking to achieve in your life? The first verse shows you. Look at this. For by grace, said Paul, you have been saved. So he's talking about people who've accepted Christ and they've been saved from their sins. You have been, you're saved, you're born again. You've been saved through faith and that not of your, yourselves. Why? Why isn't salvation from me? Because it's a gift of somebody else. Somebody else gave it to you. Somebody else gave it to me. Who gave it to me? God did. It's not of you. You didn't do it. He did it. He, gave, he offered it to you and you said yes. It's not of works that you do because God's giving you the gift and he hates the thought that you're going to say you did the gift when he gave it. He doesn't want you boasting that you did this because he did. Okay, got it. I still want to know what God's seeking to achieve in your life. For we are his workmanship. He's working on all of us. Okay, got it. He's created in Christ Jesus. Yeah, what for? <laughs> there it is. What for? For good works. What? Yeah, you've been created. 
<laughs> what for? Uh, I've been created to do something nobody else has been created to do but me. I've been created to do good works. What are they? They're something that I do. They're called a work. And they're not evil works or worthless works. They're good works that God says, I like that. That's what I want you to do. Why am I here? No, you're created in Christ Jesus for a purpose. What's the purpose? For good works. So what's God trying to get you and me to do? Come on now. To do the good works. But what about the good works? <laughs> Grab a hold of this. Never forget. Those good works? God prepared them. What? Yeah, God prepared the good works I'm supposed to do. Yeah, he set you up. <laughs> yeah, but he did. He set you up. When? <laughs> Beforehand. Before you were even here. He designed all of them. For everyone in every nation in all times until time ends. You mean before I was born, the good works I'm supposed to do, God prepared them for me to do? Absolutely, that's the point. And if you're not doing them, guess what is going to happen between you and heaven? And if you're wasting your life, not concerned about what good works you want me to do? Oh, you're missing out why you're here. What a sad thought. Well, what am I supposed to do with those works uh, that I'm? I should walk in them. That, that's a Greek word, which means you should spend your life doing the works that God prepared ahead of time for you to do. That's why you're on earth. Which means you should be able to look back over your shoulder and say, I did this for God. And I helped this person for God. And I was kind with my spouse because God told me to. And when I had a chance to be immoral, when nobody else would know, I said no. And eventually I did this for my kids. And I gave some money that we didn't really have extra because of that widow down the street. Those are the good works. Boom, boom, boom. That's why I'm here. That's why you're here. And guess what? Today is a good work that I was supposed to do for you. Yeah, but that is what it looks like. It's not complicated. Don't you make it super spiritual. <laughs> so how about your good works? So what is God seeking to achieve in your life? Let's get some points beneath it. Point number one, God established his eternal divine plan from before creation. God plans everything for his glory, both in heaven and on earth. Three, God forms, where do you see this? God forms each person uniquely to fulfill a specific part of his divine plan. Now, look at the verse beneath it. This is a passage that you may have heard of or studied yourself. It's in Psalm 139. It says, for you form my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. Your eyes, look at this, God's eyes, saw my body that was yet unformed. You, God, watched me and developed me in my mother's womb. And in your book, they're all written. And the days... Read this out loud with me. And the days fashioned for me when as yet there were none of them. What is that saying? The days of my life have been fashioned by someone else. A good and loving God who fashioned. You're, you're living this many days and that's the perfect number of days. And he fashioned them beforehand. Before what? Before I was. Because here's the good works I'm supposed to do, and this is going to take these many days for you to do it. I was teaching out in the rurals one time, and a man came in with no legs and with crutches. It was really difficult. And he listened to me teach this, and he was weeping. And he came up after him, and he said to me, 
Uh, you mean I'm not a mistake? I said, oh, no, you have the unique set of good works that are very special. You mean I do? I said, what? Don't you? Yes, I'm able to minister to other people who are suffering like no one else. Do you love Jesus? Yes, I do. Did you ever thank him for giving you a hard one to do? Did you ever thank him? Not yet, but today I'm going to thank him. And he went away a changed man. Why was he changed? He understood the ways of God.